Hey everyone, my name is Perry and in this video we're going to be watching Dr. Stone Season 4 Episode 4 to see how accurate all the science and technology in this anime really are. <laughs> Kingdom of Science, meet the Second Amendment of these United States of America. This is really not a good time for illegal immigrants to be fresh off the boat, even if that boat is named after a demigod. That's the difference between Slytherins and Ravenclaws. Scientists as the Ravenclaws are forced to share their knowledge if they wanted to get any recognition for their discovery or research. Just like Senku said, there's no monopoly on science. There needs to be peer review, papers published, and the ability to recreate the experiment to validate the results. I wonder, if there's a professor or researcher watching this video, how do you guys go about funding an experiment that is purely to validate another scientist's paper? Because there's no innovation or study going on of any kind. It's literally just redo the experiment exactly as shown in the published work. And if you don't get similar results or an equivalent correlation, you prove the other scientists wrong. If it turns out their research is valid and ethical, however, did someone or a team of scientists just waste time and grant money on redoing an experiment that already has been proven? How does that conversation go? Engineers, the Oompa Loompas of science, are all led by Slytherins, because if a team of engineers get to the finish line first and release their app or hardware device before anyone else, and it's patented, nobody else is legally allowed to copy it. It would be disadvantageous to the engineers to constantly publish what they're working on and how to recreate the technology perfectly as physicists, chemists, and biologists do. Imagine if Apple as a startup did that. They publish papers about iPhone designs, the new MacBook Pro, and the new mouse, and the touchscreen, and the click wheel before it was released to purchase by the public. If another company with more resources is able to copy everything and just get to market first, they have proof to get their patent sooner, and that poor startup just wasted a lot of resources. And boy, have we patented it. <laughs> so for engineering, you have to be a little bit more secretive in what information you actually release to the public, if any at all. Even when the product goes to market, I would hesitate to release any details about it because let other tech companies reverse engineer the iPhone if they want to make their own Hufflepuff version. Principles of natural science, chemistry, biology, and physics are shared all the time, but they have to. You can't do that as an engineer because if I share the code I'm using, or if I tell you about the intricacies of whatever is happening, I'm solving your future problems for you at no cost to you. That is a really bad strategy because you're helping your competition so much. They have a plane and it looks cool. I thought it was going to be an enemy submarine because the crocodiles in the previous episode and this would be the next threat out of the water. Nope. Now the sky is coming to kill them too. It can't be that far from the enemy's home base because of how limited their fuel sources have to be. The enemy's base has to be in a cornfield or in a position to overlook a cornfield. They will need a runway for that plane to take off. I sincerely doubt they have their own fleet because it's really difficult to make even one in these conditions, and now you have to train the pilots, and you, no, I, I just think that there's way too much to do in that case. Senku also only has one of each large device, which he adjusts depending on the need. Those tires and the body of what they're traveling over the river with used to be a tank. Just because the enemy is further ahead in weapons technology does not mean that they're far ahead in anything else. The plane that they're using isn't for transportation, it seems purely for combat, and Senku's ship, the Perseus, is likely the only one in existence, so as far as getting from point A to point B goes, Senku has them beat as far as the technology we've seen so far. A better question to ask is, how long have they been unpetrified? Because that would answer so many questions about what they have available in the quantity. Oh, 
There is no point in firing a handgun at a plane. There are literally a whole separate class of weapons specifically for anti-aircraft purposes. Anti-aircraft weapons have longer barrels in the main gun for a few reasons. One, longer barrels generate higher velocity because the propellant burns more completely. Two, a longer barrel takes longer to heat up, which means you can continue to fire more rounds without risking overheating, and this also preserves accuracy. The third reason is when a bullet, grenade, or missile is launched, there will be far less of a flash because there's more space and time for the gunpowder or propellant to burn out, which dims the muzzle flash. The critical issue is to hit a target moving in three-dimensional space. An attack must not only match these coordinates of XYZ, but also do so at the same time the target is at that position. This means that the projectile either has to be guided to hit the target or aimed at a predicted position of the target at the time the projectile reaches it, taking into account the speed and direction of both the projectile and the plane that you're aiming it at. A much easier method is volume. Launch a wall of bullets because planes are not very well armored. That would increase the weight too much and it would hurt flight speeds, it would make maneuverability more difficult. You only need a few little bullets to bring a plane like that down because of how fragile it is. <laughs> Mixing calcium carbide in water is an exothermic reaction, meaning it releases heat to make acetylene gas and also calcium hydroxide, but I think that is not gonna be as relevant here. The part of the chemical reaction that we care about is the acetylene gas, which is highly flammable and explosive. I'm surprised the plane didn't just go boom. The propeller and being outside would disperse and diffuse the gas very quickly. Maybe that's what saved it. Copper would stop this from happening because copper will catalyze or speed up the rate of decomposition for acetylene gas. Calcium carbide is used to determine the moisture content of soil. Mix the soil and calcium carbide in a pressure container, and then the water content of the soil reacts with the calcium carbide to release acetylene gas. The increase in pressure can be correlated with an approximate moisture content of the soil. Greater increase in pressure from the acetylene gas means the soil has a lot more moisture. The Netherlands got it right more than any of us though, because they kick off their new year by launching soccer balls out of turns using acetylene gas as an explosive. It's also used in Austria to wake up a couple on their wedding day. You know, that is exactly how it works actually. Microsoft, Samsung, and Gryffindors just copying Apple and Slytherins. Your competitors will have to send someone on their behalf to purchase multiple iPhones so they can bring it back, open it up, figure out how this thing works, and reverse engineer it to make their own Hufflepuff version of a smartphone. What's even more interesting about this plane is that it's going to make life so much easier for Senku to make it better. Because if you're gonna build a plane, a phone, or any anything, reverse engineering is extremely difficult, by the way. But if you start off with a busted or broken version, now you only have a 20% mystery to solve because the only thing you have to fix is the one part that's broken, which is so much easier to do. Like imagine if you had nothing and it was like build an iPhone versus if I gave you a broken iPhone and then said, okay, fix it. Way easier to fix it than starting from scratch. <laughs> He speaks Japanese too? Only Gen would have known to put his hands up when a gun is pointed at him. Kohaku or Chrome only have ever seen that gun that Yo has, right? And they literally saw it being fabricated. I don't think they would have known to put their hands up because you, they've never had a gun pointed at them. Unless someone really yells at you to put your hands up, how would they know to do that? Polygraph or lie detector tests are not actually admissible in court because they're pretty good at telling if you're lying, they're not 100%. 
And that's why you can't use them as a means of actually determining someone's sentence just based off the results of this test. First, the person administering the polygraph exam will have to establish a baseline. The idea being the further you are from that baseline, the higher the likelihood that the person is lying. Baseline questions are absolute truths that are easily verifiable, such as what's your full name? who's the current US president, and what's today's date. If someone is really nervous before taking it, establishing a baseline is very hard. And this, this salt water is a great conductor of electricity, so it'll get the most accurate readings as you can from a bucket. Gen's body temperature will heat up that water, and the temperature change might even register as him lying. Who knows? <laughs> Dr. Taiju! Sosorezo! Dr. Taiju. How come? Why not Kinro? I really thought. No, wait, no, no, no. Okay, Kinro is the best choice because he's literally a walking representation of the future. Kinro is the best choice because he has glasses, which either he or someone else would have to have fabricated from scratch in the stone world. His spear is also gold, which is not natural. If anyone saw him in the stone world with his glasses and gold spear, he would stand out much more than Taiju or Senku. He's also a fighter who speaks well, and he was able to protect himself during that first attack. He wasn't around in 2019 when the whole beam actually petrified the earth, and maybe that's why Gen didn't choose him? Thank you so much for watching. I wish you the best rest of your day.